So last but not least in this section about dynamic input, we're going to have a look at the dynamic input settings. So we're staying in the 05 underscore dynamic DWG file, which you can find in your lynda.com exercise files. And what we're going to look at is how we can set the dynamic input settings to work in conjunction with the AutoCAD command line. Now you would have thought that I would be pushing the command line and to use the command line all the time in AutoCAD, considering it's a using the command line in AutoCAD course. But what I also want you to do is get you into using the dynamic input in conjunction with the command line. They can work very, very well in tandem together. So let's have a look at how we're going to get the dynamic input settings working for us. They're down on the status bar at the bottom of the screen. So if you come down to dynamic input here, just hover over it, you can see my dynamic input is on. If I right click now, you get a little box there that says dynamic input settings. Just click on it and that'll bring up the drafting settings dialog box. And you'll notice you're automatically in the dynamic input tab because you right clicked on dynamic input in the status bar. There's all your other drafting settings that are in the status bar as well. Things like snap and grid, polar tracking, object snap and so on. Now, you'll notice there's various settings for our dynamic input. The first one is enable pointer input, and that switches on the pointer input. It switches on the dynamic input in the drawing itself. So let's go to the settings for that first. Now, you'll notice this is primarily format and visibility. So we're looking at a polar format for second or next points or a Cartesian format. That's just different coordinate settings within AutoCAD. Polar format tends to be the best because it works in conjunction with polar tracking. And then you've got the option of relative coordinates or absolute coordinates. Now, relative coordinates are relative to the last point selected. So if I was drawing a line, the relative coordinate on the second or next point would actually be relative to the last point selected. Absolute coordinates are relative to the 0, 0 in the model space within AutoCAD itself. And visibility, it's showing the coordinate tooltips as soon as I type coordinate data or when a command asks for a point or always. I always leave that set to when a command asks for a point because that way it only pops up when it needs to pop up. Now you'll notice those are all default settings and those are all I use in that particular part of the dynamic input settings. So I'll cancel that to leave them as they are. Enable dimension input where possible. Absolutely. So if you're using direct distance entry when you're using polar tracking, you can see there there's a distance box showing in the preview. So if I go to settings there, again, visibility when grip stretching, show two dimension input fields at a time, and show the following dimension input fields simultaneously. Now, I don't actually switch that one on because it gives you loads of information, can get a bit messy. So I just leave it with the two dimension input fields at a time. In my case, it's normally distance and angle. And again, I'm going to click cancel there because I don't want to make any changes. And then last but not least, I've got show command prompting and command input near the crosshairs. Yes, please. So it looks like that in the preview and show any additional tips with command prompting. Again, default settings. I never change any of these dynamic input settings when I'm working in AutoCAD, but I just want to make sure that you're aware of them. And then you've got your drafting tooltip appearance. That's primarily colors, as you can see colors in the model and the layout tabs and you've got the size and the transparency of the boxes again I leave those set to default and I apply that to override any OS settings for all drafting tooltips so I just make sure that it's set so it overrides everything when I'm running in AutoCAD you can use the settings only for dynamic input tooltips if you want to as well again I leave that to default so I'll just cancel that so I don't make any changes once I'm happy with all of that, you just click on OK and off you go and work within AutoCAD. So those are all of your dynamic input settings. So how do those work in conjunction with the command line? Well, let's make sure that dynamic input is still on. It is. And what I'll do is I'll come down to the command line, type in PL for polyline like so and press enter. So now it's asking me to specify that start point. So there you go. The command line tells me to specify start point, as does the dynamic input. And the dynamic input is asking me for coordinate entry there. So I can just tab between the coordinates. And that's those settings working in conjunction with the command line. 
It's up to you how you do this. You don't have to use dynamic input. You can just use the command line and type everything on the command line if you wish. But what I like to do sometimes is type the command in on the command line and then using the dynamic input now, I can literally put the coordinates in very quickly and just tab between them. So there's some little tricks there that you can use to make sure that your dynamic input is working alongside the command line in AutoCAD just to make you that little bit quicker, that little bit more productive.